Welcome everyone to this video where I'm going to be making a server client program in Java. So just to show you what the final result will be, so I'm going to run the server here. I have the server on this side, the client on this side. So the server's running, I have the client running, and I can send messages. So it is up, spelled it wrong, but whatever. And then, uh, so hey guys, what is up? The server receives it over here and sends back that's received the message. You can send multiple messages. So my name is Tom. I love soccer and you can see it's receiving all of these and then if I press if I type in buy um, the client closes down the socket is closed and then the server is still running however so then I can connect again I can say I have returned and so you can see that then it has sent that and so you can the server is constantly running and the, and the client will connect to it multiple times this is what we're going to be building okay so to start this program what we're going to do is we're going to first build the client and so this is just a separate um, project on IntelliJ. I'm just going to create a Java class, and I'm going to call it Client. And so then, of course, to run the client, I'm just going to make a main method. And so to make a program like this, what we have to use are sockets. And so basically, to connect to, that's what we use to connect a machine to another machine, is you use a socket connection. Basically, sockets provide the communication mechanism between two computers using TCP or transmission control protocol. And so what you have to do is you make a client program that creates a socket on its end of the communication, and then you attempt to connect that socket to a socket on the server. And then the, si the client and the server then communicate by writing to and reading from the socket. And basically what a socket connection means is that two machines have information about each other's network location, which means their IP address and also their TCP port or the port that they're communicating over. And this is represented by the socket class in Java. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a socket object called socket. I'm going to set that to null. Okay, and so to communicate over a socket connection, basically streams are what are used. So you have both an input stream that you can read data from and you have an output stream that you can output uh, output data through. And so um, a stream, what it basically is, is it's a sequence of data. And there are two types of streams. You have a byte stream, which processes data byte by byte. And you also have a character stream that allows us to read and write data character by character. And so an input stream, what that does is it reads data from a source. And so here, because we are receiving messages from the server, we need to um, have a sort of an import, an input or an input stream. And so the thing I'm going to be using here is an input stream reader because I want to be reading characters from the, from the server. And so we're just going to set that to null. And so what an input stream reader is, is it is a bridge from byte streams to character streams. So we will use the stream from the socket, the input stream, to create an input stream reader. And so with this program, something we also need is we need to send messages to the server. So what we basically need is we need an output stream. And so what I'm going to be using in this is the output stream writer class. And just originally, I'm going to set that to null. And so basically, the output stream writer is a character-based output stream. So it's a bridge from byte streams to character streams. And it does this by wrapping an output stream or a byte-based stream, which we are going to obtain from the socket. And so now what we are going to be doing is we're going to try and improve the efficiency of the program by using buffers. So basically, the point of a buffer is to speed the input-output operations by rather than writing one character at a time to the network or the disk, it writes a large block at a time. So in other words, instead of reading one character at a time from the underlying reader, the buffered reader reads a larger block or an array at a time. And so basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to wrap the input stream reader with a buffered reader just to improve efficiency. And so when, when the buffer is full, what it will do is it will flush to the underlying input stream reader all at once. So the input stream reader right here that we are going to be wrapping is um, when the buffer is full, it'll flush everything to it, and then it will flush everything from there to the, um, in, for, to the input stream. So what we're going to do is use the buffered uh, reader class, which is called buffered reader, and we're starting it out as null. And so here I'd just like to give a visual demonstration of um, buffer. So this right here can be seen as the input stream reader and um, this big blue diagram with the arrow. And this, um, these here are what we consider um, buffers. And so this right here is an input stream reader that is wrapped by a buffered reader. And this is just the regular input stream reader. And it's just a nice way to see how you can see in a buffer you have C-A-N all there when this buffer is, gets full. So it holds three. In reality, it holds a lot more than that. but um, when, it's, when the buffer is full, it goes gets flushed down to the input stream reader, which then goes through this to the um, original input stream. And you can see it's a lot faster than just having one character at a time. 
And so we're going to be doing the same thing with the output stream writer. We're going to be wrapping that with a buffer, and that will be buffered writer. And so it does the same thing where it um, first all the bytes that are written to it will get put inside the buffer in the internal byte array in the buffered writer. And when this buffer is full, it will flush the underlying um, to the underlying output stream writer, which is what we are wrapping, and it'll do that all at once. So I'm just going to call that buffered writer. I'm going to set that equal to null. And so now that we've got all the objects set up that we're going to be using, we're going to surround what we're going to be doing in a try block. And so the first is we're going to create our socket object. So socket equals new socket. And you can see the, um, some of the um, arguments that it takes. What we're going to be doing is localhost and just specify a random port number. I like to use just 1234. And so as we know, the socket object is created so we can connect to the server because two um, programs communicate over sockets. And so next we're going to create the, um, the stream reader or the input stream reader, which will be new input stream reader. And from the socket, the socket will have an output stream to the other socket and an input stream coming from it. So we're going to do get out get input stream, which will be a stream of bytes. And then it'll be um, cast. It'll be bridged by the input stream reader to be characters. And now we're going to do an output stream writer, the same thing, socket.get output stream. And then after that, um, what we have to do is we're just going to wrap the um, wrap both of these, the reader and the writer, with the buffered reader and the buffered writer just to improve efficiency. And so we're going to do input stream reader and then buffered writer equals new buffered writer and then output stream writer. So now we're going to create, we're going to use the scanner class because we're taking input from the console. And so you do scanner equals new scanner. And it'll take the argument. We're going to do system.in, which basically means keyboard input. It's like an input stream that is connected to the keyboard for input from console, pro from, uh, console programs. OK, and so now for after this, we're going to want to wrap the rest of the stuff we do in a while loop. While true basically means it will run forever because while true, true is always true. And so the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to make a string, and let's just call it message to send. This is going to be the message that we're going to send to the server, and we're going to do scanner.nextline. So basically the scanner is just going to retrieve the next line. And then we're going to do buffered writer, and we're going to use dot write, and one of the arguments that it takes is a string, and we're going to do message to send. And so after we've done that, what we will want to do is we'll want to do buffered writer dot new line. And so basically, when it set, uses this write message, it'll send it, but it won't send a new line character. And if we're using, you'll see in a bit, but buffered reader, and we use read line, it won't know that the line has ended. So we have to use read line. And next is something we're going to be doing, buffered writer.flush. And so basically, what um, flush does is it flushes the stream. And the only time a buffered writer will flush its stream, unless you tell it to, is when its buffer is full. And so these aren't giant messages that we're writing, so the usually what you would use buffered writer with and stuff like that is for really large text files. But we are sending messages, and we still want to improve efficiency, and so we're going to have to flush it each time we write, even though we're not writing that many characters. And so we are flushing here because we are sending messages to the server, and we want these messages to be sent when the enter key is pressed, not when the buffer is full, because that would be a really big text message, like a big block message that you get from someone that you don't even want to read. And so now we're going to be using the buffered reader. So here we've sent a message. To the, um, to the server, and now we're going to be waiting for a response from the server. And so we do that by read line. And so basically what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be waiting for the server to send a response. And um, But what we want to do is we want to actually outprint what the server has said. And so we can say server plus buffered reader dot read line. And so like what I said here is how we use um, we also send a new line character down the stream. Um, this is why, because it says read line, we'll be using this in the server, but it doesn't know that the line has ended. If we just keep writing things, we actually have to explicitly send a new line. And then the next thing we're going to be doing is, you saw in the example program, that if the message, or if message to send, so what we send to the server, I'm going to do equals ignore case, is by. Then what we're going to do is break. So we'll break out of this while, while loop. And so now let's just implement some error handling and um, closing of the streams. And so I'm just going to click, I believe these are all input output exceptions. So if I just go to more actions, um, add catch clause, 
So we've got all those errors that have gone away. Um, I think this is because unknown host is also an input output exception. Yeah. And so now I'm also going to add a finally clause just to make sure that everything is closed properly. And so this will also be need to be surrounded in a try catch. So I'm going to do socket not equal null, then socket dot close. Um, if input stream reader is not equal null, input stream reader dot close, and so on. Okay, so you can see I've um, done error checking with everything and then closed. And so now we'll just need to catch the input output exception here. And then I'll just do e or um, e dot print stack, stack trace. And so this is the client program. So this is all we need for our client to get this program up and running. Okay, and so now I've created a separate project in IntelliJ. And so now I'm just going to do is I'm going to, and I've named it server. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a class called server. I'm going to do the same thing as before. I'm just going to have a main method. And then, so this will be a lot quicker because it's basically the same as the client. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a socket, make that null. Then I'm going to do an input stream reader. That it's a null. I'm going to do an output stream writer. Set that equal to null. And then same with the buffers. And so the main difference is, and the most important difference, is that we are going to be using something called a server socket object. And so what a server so socket object um, is, is it basically just waits for requests, requests to come over the network, and it listens on a certain port number for these connections. And then using a certain method, which you will see um, uh, called accept, it then returns a socket object that you can communicate with the client over. So we're going to do new server socket, and it's just going to be the port number that it runs on. And something that is important is this port number here must match the port number that your client is using because it's saying that you're going to be communicating basically on this port, and so you need to make sure those are the same. And so another big difference in this is we're going to be having in this two while loops, two uh, while true loops so that the server is, con is constantly running. And so, but the first thing we're going to do, and it's going to be in a... Um, try catch block of course is we're going to do the socket object we're going to set that equal to server socket dot accept so like i said server dot accept basically waits for a connection and when that connection is made it creates a socket op socket object then the client and server can use to communicate by writing to it and so on and so then it's just going to be the same deal we're just going to do equals new input stream reader socket dot get input stream um, we're going to do output stream writer equals new output stream writer and we're going to get the output stream from that. And then once again, we're going to wrap these in a buffered reader and a buffered writer, respectively. So just like this. Or sorry, and then output stream writer. And so this first while loop is going to be the one that's used to create a new socket every time the client accepts a connection. And so our second while loop is what we're going to be used to send data back and forward. And so the second while loop will go here inside the um, the try block. And so we're just going to have while well true. And we're going to have string. We're going to get, because the client will be the one who will initiate the messaging. We'll do message from client equals buffered reader dot read line. So this will read what the client has sent. And then we're just going to outprint um, client plus message from client. And then the next thing we're going to do is um, we're just going to send a um, send something back to the client just to show that we have received what they got. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to say message received, just like that. And then once again, I'm going to do a new line so that when the client is doing read line, it'll send a new line character so it knows. And then I'm going to do buffered writer dot flush because the buffer will only flush when it's full and it won't with such a small message such as message received so we're going to automatically flush it and then we're just going to say if the message from client equals ignore case by then we are going to break out of this loop and so you can see we have two while loops two while true loops that will be constantly running and so the first is to accept 
a new client connection. And the second one is just so when we get, so we go here, we get a new socket, we create the streams and everything for it. And then we start, go to this while loop and we just constantly send messages. And then when the client disconnects by sending by, we'll break out of that and we'll loop back here and we'll just wait for another client to connect. And so the only last thing that we need to do now is we just need to add the catch clauses. So just like that. And so now one of the final things that we need to do is we are just going to, we need to close everything down. So if the client has said bye, they don't want to communicate anymore, we're going to close that socket and we're going to close all the readers, writers, and streams. And so then we'll do dot close buffered reader dot close buffered writer dot close and then for this um, this catch block here we are for this let's just add this to the method signature to make it easier and so this should be the final product and now for the final product if we get the server up and running and the client up and running just say hi message received how are you See so getting printed to the server's console over there. Um, let's say bye. Bye. We finish here. And then let's just connect again. Because the server's still running. We shouldn't have any issues. Hello again. And there you can see. So um, this is the video. Thank you for watching.